coming in the door in person. <laughs> Sideways. <laughs> I don't know. It's not working. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Right. Um, welcome, everyone. Let's recording in progress. In pro uh, in progress with recording, and we're here we have the um, Rochester Select Board meeting, January 24th, which has been posted in three public places, right? Mm -hmm. And on the website and emailed to interested parties so we can legally move forward um, with this meeting. And we have um, a provision for public comment at the end of the agenda and we'll limit those to five minutes per topic per person. And we'll start with the uh, prior meeting minutes of January 10th of 2021. And I saw them that look good. I just saw one typo. 22. 22, you're right, 20, thank oh, you, 2022. I keep, I keep still writing 21, too. <laughs> um, yeah, down here, and I marked it, and it, said, it should say town instead of toe, toe, and toe meeting. Okay. <laughs> um, you guys see anything else? In, no, that was the only one. So I'd move to approve those minutes with that one typo correction. I second that. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. And then we also have the minutes from the... Um, special select board meetings the two of them uh, were tacked on to the budget and finance committee meeting to um, deal with approving the budget which we're still working on so um, there was not a whole lot in the minutes but they do show that we opened the meeting and tabled the decision to approve the budget so i move to approve the what were the dates of those two meetings january 11th we'll do that one first 2022. I second it. And all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right. And then we also have the same deal for January 19th. I second that. And all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. We got those minutes taken care of. And in uh, under new business, we have first on the list is uh, approving first class and outside consumption liquor license for Maple Soul LLC. That one is right, right up. No, nope, not two that one. They got tags on them. They, the little, they're upside down. Upside um, down. in front of you. Yep. Over here. Oh, oh, there we go. The ones with the checks on them. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I would um, move to approve those. I second that. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All righty. Sign those. Go with those to sign them. And we're going to talk about the town meeting. And um, along with the relaxed rules again by the state for. Um, we're allowed to put it off, which we have decided to put it off for a, a month tentatively. And we're still talking about a meeting in person at this time. And we did give us another month to evaluate the situation. We still reserve the option to, to go um, with the Australian ballot on that. Or, or what are you guys thinking? Are we just going to do it in person? I think it's yet to be determined. Yet um, to be determined. Nancy, what's our the, the deadline timeline our, that we have on that? <clears throat> we're basically okay right now with the exception of getting the um, town report to Spalding to be printed. We have to have the, we have to mail them. The last day we have to mail time reports is March 18th. And we really got to give them two weeks to mm -hmm. to meet the March 28th deadline yeah. Yeah. and when we go to to Spalding I've got to know where it's going to be and how it's going to be mm. right right so we don't have that much time we have basically uh, we've got a couple weeks a couple weeks yeah to yeah. make that decision I, 
I think that if we're going to have a in-person meeting, um, then we should probably have the vote from the floor because you can. The only way you can alter any budgets in an in-person meeting is from the floor. Mm -hmm. And if we do Australian ballot, no matter if we have an open meeting and somebody wants to amend the budget, we won't be able to with an Australian no, ballot. Won't. Yep. So I, I don't know about you guys, but if we're going to meet in person, I think we should do a in-vote that night ballot and get it over with. So you can amend something if you need to. So people that are on Zoom won't be able to vote? I wouldn't think so. I don't know how they would. I don't see if they could. I didn't hear what you said, Pat. People, people that are on Zoom would not be able to <coughs> vote. So. No. Because it wouldn't make any sense, at least to this me. It's either one way or the other, not, not a hybrid. Right. I mm -hmm. don't think we can do it any yeah. other way. If we're going to meet in person, we might as well have the vote right there and mm -hmm. get it over with. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to just have a remote meeting again, mm -hmm. then we do the Australian ballot. We did not have a remote town meeting. No, we right. just had a I mean, I mean, informational meeting. An, yeah. an informational meeting. That if right. we're going to do that again, then we need to do the Australian right. ballot. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. And our informational um, meeting was the week before. We did a couple two of them, right? right? Just right. one second, Martha. We did two. Yeah. yeah. We did two. We did me, one a week can. from. And then we did one on the. We did one on, on February seventeenth and one on twenty the twenty fifth. Right, right. Not that yeah. Okay. That sounds right. And so we. Uh, <coughs> so basically. We just wouldn't have a town meeting if we mm, went with an Australian. Right. We do two informational meetings like we did last. Year. Right. Yeah. And we would need to make that decision before the report goes to press. Um, yeah. Yep. So are we um, feeling like it's going to be an in-person meeting? Are we going to are we going to make that decision now, or are we going to drag our feet a little bit? The board of civil authority has to make the decision. Is that I the board of civil authority? Martha has a question too. Okay. Doesn't the board of civil authority have to make that decision? Uh, they no, just, that's our they decision. Just, I think right. it's your decision. Our decision. It's, it's they, the they, board. Yeah, and then they. Um, then they vote on it. They okay. vote on the, the process. Okay. Yeah, I believe, yeah. And because you're in charge of the elections, though, right? Even in the town elections, how do you feel about it? Um, it'd be nice to bring the community back together again for an in-house, finally. But, um, it'd have you know, see how the numbers do or... So we, we keep an eye on COVID for another, Do maybe another meeting or two, or what, another well, meeting? I don't another. think we have that luxury. No, no, we have, um, I, 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 think, I think that when we finally um, decide on the budget, that at that point would we would make that decision also. That gives um, us another week or so to see what the numbers are. See what the numbers are. and. You know, today was the first day we've been under a thousand in the state. Yeah, I remember when we worked up and it was like thirty-seven. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So we were down around five hundred yeah. mm -hmm. for the count. So, um, so could I ask a question, please? Job. All right, Martha, your turn. Yeah, um, at the meeting you had on the nineteenth, I I uh, attended that via Zoom, and I miss maybe I misunderstood, but I understood you at the time that you voted to definitely have it on the 28th of March um, at the school in um, yeah. person. Yeah. And so I had written a little article about that. It's still early and I mean, I we're not quite on deadline yet, so I can take that separate article off the Rochester page and just deal with whatever you decide tonight, you know, like you're still thinking about it. But am I wrong that that's, I, I got the impression that you'd made a definite decision, so. I don't think we said it would be at the school. That oh, well, not necessarily at the school, but it was at March 28th in person was the meeting. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, I, I, 
obviously you have to decide what you think is best but i just wanted to make sure that i, I if you want i can remove that article from the rochester section what did the minutes say? Just make decision. i think we should just decide to have an in-person meeting yeah and that's fine with me i don't care yeah on the 19th yeah we'll just say that the board discussed their options and decided to do a floor vote meeting moving the date Frank made the motion to move the town meeting date to the 28th yep. at 7 p.m. So, yeah, we've already June 2nd been there, the done motion. that. All in favor, so voted. So, yeah. we're pretty much... The only much thing you, we, you didn't, didn't say, say was where. The was, school. Was where. Yeah. Because at that time, you didn't know. And we, we didn't know what the condition of the school would be for us to do it. Right. Because right. that was when they were having their pipes breaking and such. Yeah. So, I, I'd say we got that pretty well set. So, uh, would, should we add that um, detail to the school? tonight so yeah Martha you can complete your article saying that we are having the in-person meeting on March 28th at 7 p.m. at the school auditorium and if the okay so work, dress warm <laughs> all right in person all right okay and so um, all right thank you I just wanted to I will include that in this article too but I wanted to make sure that if I'd screwed up, I got got it off the page on time, you know. But I I was I thought I had understood you correctly that um, you had de voted on it. Okay. Yeah. Thank we you. Didn't yeah. do the school. Right. No, we didn't say where. Okay. It was. So now I could include the school or not. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I guess that's enough discussing about town meeting, eh? <laughs> I won't be there. <laughs> you won't be there, no. Yeah, well, that was, you're hoping to be Australian ballot, so you could zoom in, right? Let's have it on a normal day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I based my whole plan yeah, on. Yeah. All right, so um, next on the agenda is the discussion of the legal trails and the question about utilizing such to access uh, property and possibly subdivide it. Um, so we had talked about this on the last meeting some and found not much new information is definitely you know they're in our um, town plan legal trails are are mentioned to be used exclusively for recreational purposes and not intended for vehicle access and they're not considered highways that's um you know they do get some vehicle access that particular trail has been used to um, access logging operations fairly recently um, I guess the question is you know um, I looked in our policies and we do have a policy and a, an application for um, a user improvement of class 4 roads but nothing specifically speaking to legal trails I mean the same kind of idea would probably be appropriate for a legal trail as well as a class 4 road the um, the other option out there is to um, the interested party could petition the town to change the uh, the classification of that road to class 4 or class 3 and um, that would definitely give um, satisfy the requirement for subdivision now it's a little complicated because there already is frontage on route 100 with the the lot so it's um of course that's very far away i believe from where they intend to be building i think the the person interested in the lot is here in in zoom would you would you care to elaborate about where you're thinking of of building and 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 what what your thoughts are on this yeah, I'm uh, Michael Tragner. I represent the Grantham family who owns uh, the property. I'm there, Forrester and uh, broker. Um, the buyer uh, is not here tonight. Okay. Uh, uh, but um, he uh, w was asking if uh, he could use Legal Trail 3 from South Hollow Road uh, from that point uh, onto South Hollow, onto Legal Trail 3 to get to the property where we had a landing. So um, it's a short ways out uh, along a, a part of Legal Trail 3 that is quite drivable and has been used by mm -hmm. vehicles mm -hmm. a very long time. 
so as right as it stands now he can definitely use that to access his property in terms of upgrading it or subdividing it that's where it gets gets complicated no terry is that that's a snow machine trail through there in the winter right correct yeah so that speaks to the recreational use that would be a, a significant um change if all of a sudden someone was using that as a as a driveway do you have any idea how far into the lot he is looking to gain access uh, yeah, almost immediately, once you get on the property on Legal Trail 3, uh, he would then pull off the road and uh, extend the driveway up on the slope a little bit. So that would be on the um, eastern slope. Yep. So any idea how far into the, because that, that's, um, that's an interesting point. I mean, how far are we... Um, where is that, um, Larry Strauss? Are you on the phone? I believe you are. There. Where is the um, property line in relation to that little bridge down in the in the gully there? Well, it's up a ways. It's up a ways past that. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's got to be because we. It's almost to the. Yeah. The, well, Pat, Patsy DeSantis. Uh, well, hello to Michael. First of all, Michael, um, I I own the last house on a class three road you've probably parked near my driveway um to look at the land a time or two um, yes. and um so um <clears throat> but patsy desantis owns a tract of land between my land and and the grantham land um uh, as well so it's there's a the i don't know the exact point of the grantham property line but it's just before the uh opening where the, the lot land landed. Was, okay yeah, so yeah it's a little ways up there yeah so um referring to town plan um you know it's not considered a highway and not intended for regular vehicle access but the but of course, you it is it is drivable and and you can't access. Now going into the zoning regulations, they have um, it states that no land development may be permitted on lots which do not have either frontage on a public road or or permanent thirty foot right of way easement um, onto the land. Um, that again, it gets a little tricky obviously they're not considering the frontage on route 100 to be applicable for where they want to build way too far away um you know it's it seems like the zoning to to especially with the consider of subdividing and and building you know the two brothers wanting to build a place if they wanted to do that it sounds like that would need to be modified from a legal trail to more of a, a town, a class town highway. Or the other option is the um, to seek an easement right off of Bethel Mountain Road, which um, would be another option. Um, you know, so there's, you know, you have the, there's a process to, Petition um, under the requirements of 19 VSA 708 to um, to change the um, classification from a trail to a road. Um, if that petition is submitted, we're required to go through the process, but that does not require us to do it to make that change. Of course, we would, you know, that involves uh, um, input from the general public and. I know I've talked a lot. Do you guys have any input thoughts on this? <laughs> no, you were you were doing a pretty good job. job. I was <laughs> running out of things to talk about. <laughs> I have just one question, Do, and I'm sorry. The That's petition right. would be to change the class of the road. Would that be yes. it? I'm sorry. Did I hear you? Yes. yes Thank it you. Is. Yeah. Right. Class three, the legal trail to a class three or class four? Yeah. Yeah. Either either one of those. The um. The class three road would mean that we would would plow it. If it was just a class four road, that would um, satisfy the requirement for 
frontage on a town highway, but it would still leave the responsibility for maintenance on the the person who files an application to to do that. Okay, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. That's, that's all right. I wanted to make sure I got it right. That's right. I knew we had that agreement, but and we have that um, application in place for class four roads, but like I said, not um, not for legal trails. But right. it would. I, I the, guess. the town zoning, I believe, like you had mentioned, the town zoning, uh, you could build if you have a legal right of way. Well, isn't a legal trail a legal right of way? It's and I believe it's thirty feet wide. So could we we that is our right of way uh, into the property is that legal trail. So is the well, that, that is be that does give you access into it, but in for um, subdivision. That it requires right away on a on a town highway, and the legal trail is specifically not not a highway. How about if it isn't subdivided? It's just built upon. It's still the same. It's well, the same. no, that that's that's gets a little less fuzzy because it's you can. Um, it's still not a highway. It's still not a highway. It's a it's a right away though. But it is a it's you know, a it's a right away. Access. But it's a limited right away. Yeah. Yeah, it's um it's a little little tricky. The property does have road frontage on Route 100 as well. Right, which is and it does have frontage on on Jerusalem, on Jerusalem Hill. Hill too. So that that's the cloudy part. Yeah. Right. I. I personally feel that the only way you can go forward with something like this, because you're going to create an issue if you just leave it as a driveway and say that you can fix the right of way up to be a driveway. Uh, because it affects another property owner, not only one, but two property owners. And the other thing is the, the size of the lot is conducive to subdivision. So that would make it another issue for the town to have to deal with down the road if we just allow it to be a driveway and i i don't see that we should do that and i know from what i've read at least recently is is that the select board carries a lot of weight there on how to how we want to address that and it's just a matter of how we want to do that as near as i can figure out and all that i've read I mean, we, we have to make that decision, and I think if we keep it a legal trail, that's not going to permit any use any, of it other than what it is as a trail. Right, right. And the only way I see forward to even possibly use it as anything would be to up, upgrade it to a Class 3. And I don't know if that's right for the other landowners. I think that's an issue that we should address with them before we even considered something like that. Because the lot is definitely so big um, that there could be several building lots on it. And I think that's where you run into a lot of problems by just putting a driveway in there. Bruce has something. Yeah, Bruce. Say. Yeah, I just want to say, just because it's been used for logging, that's a temporary use. Uh, they're in and out of there. Um, if you're creating a driveway, that's more of a permanent use. And if the town allows that on a legal trail, I feel that you're leaving the town open to a lawsuit. Um, like Frank, I, I see the only legal way to grant that access is by upgrading that legal trail to a class three or four road. Like that. And uh, just because vehicles have used it in the past doesn't mean it's a legal use of that right. legal trail. Right. Same thing's happening on the Cushman legal trail. Vehicles are going up there, uh, but it's a uh, problem with enforcement, uh, but that doesn't make it right. The legal trail is supposed to be a recreation use, not a driver. So it, it's um, sounded like to, to really move forward in terms of 
um, subdivision or even um, even a driveway access that it would be uh, would want to entertain a request to you know change the classification of that road it doesn't sound like it has to be we're not talking about changing the whole trail we can just reclassify a section of it basically would be extending Little Hollow Road by several South hundred Hollow. yards South Hollow South Road Hollow. South Hollow Road yeah yeah, that's that is basically what the request is. Is is if they improve it to the standards of a class four road, mm -hmm. would we reclassify it mm -hmm. to be a class four road? Yeah. And that's a so the landowners were going to do the improvements. Did I understand that correctly? If if it's their a, proposal is if it's a if we upgrade it to a class four road, then that would be on the. Um, on the, the responsibility of the landowners. If we improve it to a, a class three road, I think we have to, we still don't have to. No, yeah. it's on well, the yeah, landowner. It's not something we would do. That yeah, yeah. Class, class three would be too much. But. Yeah, the class three would be all on the landowner too. Right, now do, do you have the specifications to provide to your buyer on what would be involved to upgrade that road from a trail to a class four? Um, I, I assume, I don't know of any uh, specs that the town would require and would be interested in those if there was such a spec. There are mm -hmm. specifications for drainage yeah. mm -hmm. for uh, bringing that to a class four um, mm -hmm. widths and setbacks and drainage and um, the Agency of Natural Resources would also have their hand in it as well for ditching. Yep. So there, there's still a lot of agencies out there. Um, you might want to look into what it would cost to improve the road to the standard where we would be able to call it a class four. Larry Strauss. Yeah, I was just gonna I, uh, as, uh, as just part of that discussion, I think everybody should be aware and I think very few people actually are, is that um, after Irene, uh, the culvert on Rogers Brook, um, which was washed out, was replaced with an oil tank with the two ends cut out um, <laughs> by the snowmobile club. That's the and, one at the bottom of the hill there, just past your house? Yes. Yeah. So the, the existing culvert is not a road grade culvert. Yeah. So if, if I would think that if that road was going to be considered to be brought up to standard, it would include having to put a a culvert that met uh, yeah. AOT standards. Right. Yes, I would think so for sure. I agree with you 100%. Um, I, to, my question, uh, and I, I'm sure you can't answer it now, is whether the town would consider uh, uh, upgrading Legal Trail 3 to a Class 4. Um, you know, we can go through the motions on our end, but, uh, you know, we certainly don't want to do that and then hit a, hit a stone wall right away. And then the other comment is, I, I'm not sure there are just anecdotally, I'm not sure there's there's standards for class four roads. Class four roads are unmaintained town highways. They're they're in terrible shape in most towns. Um, I would think the standard is uh, the standard of of driveway and safety for emergency vehicles. <coughs> I would think that's the standard that would have to be met to upgrade that to a driveway, uh, whether it be class four, class three. Um, you know, it's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. it, it, environmental issue i mean obviously you, you have to maintain drainage and but it's also a, a a safety issue yeah um in answer to your your first question i'm just speaking as third of the select board i i think we would definitely entertain that concept part of our dictated process is to reach out and get public comment and you know from the um the town at, at large but it's um but we're definitely well aware of the lack of buildable lots in this town and and every 
every bit of improvement it was is um actually is a help for everyone in, in spreading out the tax base a little bit. So I, I, I there's no um there's no um no we don't want any building going on here. Welcome to our grand list. Yeah, welcome to the grand list, yeah. Um I I um I I'd, I'd be cautious here because on a class four road if they build a house and then say they build another house, then we have to service that with fire and rescue and all of that. And if you have a class four road that's partially maintained mm -hmm. in an inadequate way, then you're asking for trouble when they can't be serviced at all. Yeah. And the insurance on their properties is going to be tough to get without access to fire and, and rescue, I would think. So to do it properly, really, it would need to be a class it, three. Class road. three. I yeah. don't see it to be any other way. If yeah. you can save a whole lot of problems that way. Um, for everyone down the road, because I, I think if we don't do it that way, then we're going to build some problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's going to be a continuous yep. fight with, and struggle. So I would, that's the way I would look at it. That's the way I look at it anyways. Would your buyer consider upgrading the road to class three specifications? Um, I, I would have to talk with him. He, Nick is actually uh, on the Zoom. I don't know if he's available to comment, but, and I'm not sure he, he may, I think he is, there he is. So, I'm, and I'm not sure Nick understands the full cost of upgrading the road, but Nick is here and he can comment on that question. Hi, uh, good to meet everyone. Hello. I think that um, upgrading the road was something that um, was sort of in, in our minds, referring to Michael and I, uh, from the moment I began looking at the property. So I think there's certainly an expectation that upgrading the road is going to be required. Obviously, it boils down to costs. Uh, have had some conversations about upgrading to, to driveway standard, but I, I will confess ignorance as to the difference between driveway standard and class three. So we'd have to research that a little bit. And if, um, if the pricing was similar to what I've been discussing with um, uh, an excavator or two, then yes, I think that is that is possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's look in. Why don't why don't you do some homework into looking into that? And then if you can meet us at the class three standard, I think we could make that commitment. Okay, Michael, you may know or, or, or a member of the select board may know. Are those specifications something one can easily get their hands on? Uh, um, I can follow. Agency. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And I believe the Agency of Transportation, um, you can find those on the Agency of Transportation website. Um, we may be able to provide that to you. Joan is going to be on board, and she may have that at her fingertips. So we, we, we can help you with that if you can't find it on your own. Okay. Great. So just, just so I walk away with a clear understanding, if, uh, if we do some research and establish that upgrading into a class three road is viable, both in terms of physically possible and, and, and affordable, mm -hmm. um, then we would move through the process to have that approved by you. And I think you said other agencies would be involved. Right. And we would do the approval of, uh, the class three uh, dependent on whatever plans you were uh, providing to us. There would there would probably yeah. need to be some type of engineered plans to show where the drainage for the road is, how the ditches are, um, the elevations of the road here and there. So um, that would be what we would do our approval on. Is it is it not possible that an approval could be a preliminary or tentative approval could be given to the upgrading to class three and then the money uh, that would be required to actually develop the plans would then be removed would then be presented and you would remove the tentative or not you would accept or reject. In other words, I guess I guess what I'm saying is if if the road is going to be rejected as an upgrade to class three. You then don't want to spend the money on the engineering plans for that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we get that. No, I, yeah. no we're, we're, we're going to be fair. And, and yeah, yeah we, we understand that. If you provide us with the specifications of class three, we're making a commitment that up until the point where 
you leave the trail. It becomes a trail again after that, but up to the point where you want to improve the road, we would grant that upgrade and access in class. And we also okay. maintain it after that too, after the class three. Yeah. The town takes that over. So it's built to town specs. Class three is built to town specs and we take it over at the end of the construction. You would save in plow bills. True. Bruce and plow out to your lot. Bruce? Okay. To where you leave until the until the, the true driveway comes off the, Correct. the class three. Right, right, Correct. Correct. Right. Okay. Got it. That's that's helpful. Uh, Bruce Flewellen, you had a comment? Yeah. Am I correct in, in saying that in order to change the classification of that legal trail to a town road class four or class three, you have to go through the hearing process before you can make a decision? Is that correct? I don't know. We would I, if we were downgrading. I'm not sure if we were upgrading. I'm not sure, Bruce. I'm not sure if 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 we have to. I know that the um, I, I, we do have to do have some public comment and input on it. I know that's part of our, in part of our um, we would have that um, I think it's whether it's in the town plan or the zoning. It's it's stated that any any change will be have a public input on that. It's like it's like throwing up lights. Right. You may want to look into that because when I looked into upgrading the Jones Mountain Road for that first quarter mile, uh, I was told that that would have to go through the process of regular hearing to upgrade that road from its current class four to a class three. Uh, so it's something to yeah, look yeah. into. No, I think that would be part of the process that we would go through to, to make that determination right yeah. all the more reason to have the plans in our hands as yeah. well yeah <coughs> um anybody else? anybody else have any any comments questions everybody here looks good on zoom yep no it's um i i think it's uh there's you know, it's a pretty doable chunk of road right there. There could be a lot worse places that you'd be proposing to to have the town expand a road. I mean, it's uh, it would take some work, but I don't think it's uh, it's jumping over too many hurdles there. All right. Well, thank you for your consideration very much. Oh yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. From a, from a timing perspective, is is this a situation where if we were to secure or to have plans drawn up, we would then get back on the select board schedule. Is there a? Yes, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. absolutely. We're here twice a month. Okay. Yep. And then, then we would probably, um, um, when we know for sure that you're interested in moving <coughs> forward, then we would uh, conduct probably the public hearing and to you know, you know, make more noise about it and, and gather all the input that that we need. Okay. Great. Well, thank you all very, very much for, for considering this. Appreciate it. Yep. 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 Nope. Thanks for stepping out on Zoom. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, moving on to um, Joan, I think you're there in Zoom land. Do you got any um, updates or um, more insight on the conversation we just had? Um, uh, I'll abstain from that. Okay, I'll have to uh, change. Right. They all dropped anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, I do have a few things to discuss. Let me turn on my video so you can see me. Um, let's see. First of all, uh, Pat and I attended a meeting with uh, Brian Austin from the U.S. Forest Service and uh, two of the engineers from VHB having to do with... Um, getting the bid out for um, the replacement of the bridge at West Hill, bottom of West Hill Road. And we're looking to uh, being able to do that in early February, if that's possible. Um, the engineering drawings for Did you say contractors early, use early, early February. Early February, okay. February, okay. yes. 
Um, they are almost finished with the uh, engineering plans that would go out with the bid documents. They just need one one more review by a high level engineer and then they will be sending them to us for uh, review and comment. And the bid package is almost complete as well. So they'll be sending that to us for review as well. And, um, we discussed whether there would be a mandatory site visit and decided that wasn't necessary. Uh, there are just a, you know, a certain subset of contractors who are uh, experienced with bridge replacements for VTRANS and for similar authorities in the state. And so they feel that uh, those guys will um, do what they need to do uh, in order to place a bid but they'll they'll welcome to go out and take a look at the site on their own if they want to. Um, and typically the bids, they're gonna follow the VTRANS uh, way of doing things, which is they put the bids out on a Wednesday and uh, bids will be opened on a Friday. We don't have dates for that yet, of course. Uh, you'll know well in advance when we're ready to do that. Um, so hopefully we will, uh, be ready. We'll have uh, contractors chosen by, say, April, I would imagine, at the latest, under contract and ready to go uh, as soon as the weather permits and contractors are ready. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Oh, uh, there's one thing that I need select board assistance with, which I mentioned to Pat in the meeting, is that we do have John Alexander all signed up. He's under easement. Um, and uh, recorded easements are, are done there, but um, I am not getting a response from the Carter family. Uh, Brian and I met with them back in sometime around the end of November and um, Mrs. Carter, Kelly Carter and her son, Michael, both said they would agree to doing the easements. We need both a permanent and a um, temporary easement from them. But since that time, I've been trying to work with Kelly and um, she clearly has indicated that they want more money than what's been offered to them in the draft documents. And so I've asked them to let you know what those, what their requirements are. And I'm not hearing back from them at all. So I'm ready to turn it over to someone on the select board to try and um, uh, get the cooperation from the Carters so that we can move ahead because there was some reluctance at the meeting for us to, to actually go out to bid without knowing we've got our easements all in place. Um, excuse me, that, that, that. Going. Okay, that would be great. Okay. Um, Frank, I can give you her email and uh, phone number and uh, you know, I can fill you in on, on what our conversations have been up to this point. Yeah, we can t chat about that. Okay. okay, that would be great, thank yep. you. You're welcome. Am I correct uh, that this is the same the same first thing about the West Hill Road project that you were talking about before that, that you need to get the cooperation of these people for to dealing with that project? Uh, West Hill Bridge, yeah. yes. Yeah. West Hill the Bridge. West Hill Bridge project. Okay, great. I yeah. thought so, but I wanted to make sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, no problem. Um, uh, the generator bid has been put out. Uh, it was advertised in last week's Herald and it's also on the state sites. And um, I have the due date for bids to be submitted uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day, which is a Monday um, at three o'clock. So that'll be before a scheduled select board meeting. So we'll be able to open the bids at the select board meeting. Um, and so far they've, I've had Two, two contractors who uh, asked for the bid package. And we'll see how that goes. And I have one at the office. And if another one. Mm -hmm. has, has anybody spoken that they wanted to meet <laughs> at the site? Um, one of them is uh, one of the contractors who provided us a quote in the past. So uh, when we had to do it for our, our app grant application. Right. So he probably does not need to do that again. There's another one who, who will. I imagine um, he had some comments about it when he uh, got the package. So you should be hearing from him. Okay. Yep. Uh, what yep. the instructions are, are if you remember, Frank, is for them to call the town office and then the town office will. Right. Connect. Right. Yeah. I do and recall that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, June, yeah. uh, I need you 
to sign a uh, grant agreement with VTrans. Yep, is that here in our packet, I think? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yes, and I think uh, Julie has sticked yep. up for you, you know where to sign. Yep. This is the reconfigured Mount Cushman Road replacement grant that we got in either 2017 or 2018. Just remember, it's being repurposed. Um, and uh, this should be the final document, the grant agreement, that gives us uh, up to $175,000 repurposed for mm -hmm. the construction cost. Hopefully, we will not need anything uh, like that amount, but we'll see. All right. Okay. And, and last but not least, uh, do you remember the town garage stormwater project? Yeah. It's gone four or five times. Uh, hoping that uh, either it's five, six, that the sixth time, whatever it is, will be the charm. Uh, so White going, River Partnership to go out to, to bid, bid again. again. Yeah. Yes. And they're doing it a little bit differently this time um, in consultation with. Uh, the stormwater engineer, they have a list of three contractors who are have already had um, experience with installing one of these downstream defender structures and also have the equipment to do the installation. Uh, because if you remember, that was part of the problem with the bidding process in the previous uh, efforts mm -hmm. was limited number of contractors who have that kind of equipment because it's a big, heavy piece of concrete yeah all right well that's um, uh, be interesting to see what comes of that yeah they're being posting the bid on january 28th uh due date of march 7th and looking for construction anytime between may and september and uh i have a email out to cooter to find out if he has any uh time frames that he doesn't wants to block out like if he's getting you know sand in september or something like that uh, when it wants to have the project finished. Yeah. So have that uh, time frame set with his okay, uh, we'll be all set to go out to bid. We, it's really White River Partnership, which is doing all of this. So, excuse me, um, Joan, did you, you said the, the storm, st town garage stormwater project bids will be posted February 28th? January 28th. January 28th. Okay, sorry. And they'll be pushed back if we, you know, don't have all our ducks in a row. But yeah, that's their yeah. plan, right? All right. That'd be nice to have that that resolve and and get those things in the ground instead of sitting in the in the floodplain where they are now. Who pays for the maintenance? Uh, on yeah, you're really nice. Yeah. Yep. Hmm? Who pays for the maintenance on that? Yeah, who pays for the maintenance on that? Terry wants to ask. That's a town responsibility. That'd be town responsibility. It's a town responsibility. Yeah. And it, is that, it has, has that been that taken into know? consideration for well, next funny. year? Uh, no, it's the kind of thing that once in a while, you know, I'd have to go back into the file to remind myself because it's been a little while since I've looked at, but we discussed it and it was something where you just have to check it then and make sure that that filter down at the bottom is not getting clogged or has too much sand, silt, whatever in it. Um, and then it has some kind of a, I think somebody has to come and vacuum it out. It's not necessarily something that happens every, every year, uh, but it, it does need, it does need monitoring. It's the nature of the equipment there that, um, mm -hmm. All right. I guess that would be interesting to know if there is any clean water grants out there that will, um, kick in any on that, um, on ongoing maintenance. Mm -hmm. Do we have any, I, I any, don't. any um, estimate about what the what the um, maintenance schedule or cost would be? I, I think I might do. Um, I'll have to get back into my file and, and yep. let you know. Yeah. What are you going to say? I was remembering something like twelve hundred dollars for the vacuum visit. Yeah. Is what they had as an estimate, and that was. Ooh, two, three years ago. Yeah, you better mm -hmm. add that pack again. Yeah. I, I bet it costs two grand. Yeah. Those back trucks. And whenever the engineers tell you it's going to be double, double that. Pump, <coughs> mm -hmm. just like our sewers. Yeah. It's going to be a big expense. Well, all right. Um, 
Um, thank you, Joan. Yep, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, have we got anyone online from the library tonight? No. No, no. It's still there, though. Um, highways are in pretty good shape. They've been um, digging at that sand pile. <laughs> uh, um, Terry, got anything from the utility world? No, no. Thanks for coming in. Is uh, Jeff Gephardt here, the energy coordinator? Hey, yes, Jeff. He what do you got for us tonight? Uh, good evening. Not very much. Um, I've been was asked by the Murray family to um, attend the uh, planning and zoning uh, board meeting uh, regarding their plan for a, a, it's it's a family solar system. Um, and uh, so we did that. They, um, they wanted to know how the committee felt about the project, the Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee. And I said, we don't know. Uh, we have to have a meeting and, and to have an opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the Planning and Zoning Board asked if we would take that up at our last meeting, and we did. And um, Essentially, this is a decision of the Planning and Zoning Board. It's not the Energy Committee's decision, but we did look at the uh, town plan and also at the uh, um, the uh, uh, Public Utility Commission's rules for that, and we'll provide a letter to the Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, hopefully, we'll help them a little bit with the decision. Um, in addition, um, the uh, Rochester Area uh, Climate Initiative um, is moving on a meeting Wednesday with Vermont Council on Rural Development. Um, they are transitioning. John Copens is leaving uh, end of uh, the month, and we'll be working with Alyssa Johnson going forward. And then the only other thing I wanted to do is just remind the board that uh, we have an offer regarding uh, uh, electric vehicle charging uh, and really the next step is in our court to figure out the location uh, for use and, and to identify uh, maybe some grants to seek uh, for funding uh, to, to get that project going forward. Yep. That's it. Thank you, Jeff. So the uh, when they did come to visit the Green Mountain Power about um, an EV charging spot. The um, one spot that they were relatively excited about was the old fire station, which is um, which is interesting. It's uh, close. I know you have some reservations <laughs> about do. that, Frank. I, I do have reservations about yeah. it, only because it's a building, and if you stick something in there, then there's a liability issue with that, and plus we use it for storage, so mm -hmm. we'd have to do something. I, I would worry more about vandalism on something like that because it, it would be sheltered, um, and I just, I just have reservations that way. I think there are spots where we might be able to do it, um, but I think we'll need to get some feedback from Green Mountain Power on whether or not they'd be willing to look at it that way. So yeah, one of them is the park and ride down here that when we talked to them before, they were adamant that they wanted to keep it in what they, they were looking at as a, the resiliency zone, mm -hmm. which is the village compression area. So um, that park and ride is a little bit out of the resiliency zone. Mm -hmm. And I think they could probably do it, but I'm not sure if they'd be willing to do that. So yeah. I'd, we'd have to clear it with them. And, and <clears throat> what were their um, concerns about the right outside the town clerk's office here? That seemed like a good spot. Well, it's, it's more a question of being able to service it with a three-phase power mm -hmm. line, which we'd have to probably build in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple ways they could do it. They could bring it in right from the street here, right out through the back by the firehouse, out to here, and have their setup right here in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, that's an option, certainly, but it would be a more expensive option. So there, there isn't a couple other spots that I can think of, but I would want to uh, run that by everybody before I... Mm -hmm. Out those out. Um, so, 
so I think we just got to yeah. figure well, out I what think they can it, do. It and, behooves and I, us to take advantage of their right. interest in, in, in at least coughing up a, a chunk of the cost for this. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'll, I'll talk to Caleb again at Green Mountain Power and see what, what he thinks about where I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to use this little park and ride down here if at all possible. Joan, are you still online here? That was our selected spot back that was, in the day. Yeah, I was yeah. curious. That was um, because that was initially part of the concept on the park and ride, and then that kind of fell in disfavor. Do you have any history on that, Joan? Uh, well, the grant we got for it was for it to be a park and ride, and there isn't really very much room outside of the actual parking area. Mm. Uh, I, I doubt that would be a good, plus you've got, you're, you're right on the bank of the stream there, and that's a no-no uh, for puck. You have to have setbacks in the stream, and if you take, and if you do any setbacks in the stream, you're, you're off the property. Mm. So I don't think you'd be able to do much solar there. No, no. Uh, just not enough room. Certainly not a commercial operation. I don't know, uh, yeah. know how many you're you're looking to get there, but they were, they're they're uh, they're looking at two units, Joan. Yeah. Uh, one is uh -huh. a is a fast charger. I don't. I think they call it a, a class three charger or class two yeah, think, or something yeah, like yeah. that. And then oh, the, one's a slow okay. charger. I think. Slower. I'm sorry. I'm still thinking yeah. solar panels. Um, you're talking about the the chart the yeah. Um, the charge the charging station. station. Charge station yeah. Sorry about that. No. Um, that well, yeah, that was in our original concept. I think when when I wrote the grant. I thought so. Uh, yeah. So the issue is just you probably have to enlarge the parking area coverage, though, because uh, whether well, there are five spaces there, and I think it would be pretty tight. Um, You'd have, you'd have to look and see whether you can unlock yeah. that. Jeff um, Yeah, Jeff? Yeah, uh, Green Mountain Power's uh, discussion was that they were going to uh, have charging available for four vehicles. There would be two fast chargers, that's a level three, and two uh, level two chargers, that's for an overnight or a longer duration, mm -hmm. you know, half a day kind of thing. Um, the fast charger is what's really lacking on Route 100, um, and charging in particular, if it's closest to, the, you know, the businesses in town and visible, or it's going to do more for the community. Yeah, so I guess maybe, uh, I don't know how much that parking area is actually used. I mean, maybe you just turn the whole thing into a charging station. Um, and I don't know what, what's required in the way of, of underground infrastructure, but, you know, as Terry can tell you, there's, there's a sewer, is it a sewer line or a, I forget what it yeah, is down there. Low. There's oh. a water line and a sewer line yeah. through there. Yeah. So I don't know how much room you'd have to maneuver there. So I, yeah. that's, yeah. 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 yeah, it's that's pretty tight there to begin right. with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fine with me. Well, um, well, you can cut them trees down, move it back toward the bank a little more. Well, that's what my thought Never. process was. But mm -hmm. the town actually it's, owns within six feet of that house. Yeah, I know we do. Mm -hmm. And I thought that and I'd need to talk to with the Green Mountain Power whether or not they could do that on a secondary system or not. And they're still wanting to keep it in the resiliency zone. Right. Yeah. And, and in order to do that, you have to build the bank of, of transformers in the village and then run the mm. cable out to the to there. So mm -hmm. I don't know if with the size service they have, and it's more charging stations than what they originally talked about when we met with them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they can run that through a secondary system or not. Was I'd that, have to check with that because it's two seventy seven for the church and digging out back in, putting a little wall there. They have some nice looking block walls now. It doesn't look bad, and then it'd be you got right in the middle the, of town. The worst problem with that is that. is uh, you don't 
you can't just block out the parking right. spot, you know, and keep them open. My my other thought was, and and this is something that's not even our town property really, but it's a school down there, right on the bank, right off there, the line that's right there. Um, you could put four stations in on that bank just off the road. You know, yeah. by no, the I fire hydrant fine. there. Is that where, the school property or is that Debbie's the, property? That would be school's property. Uh, but mm -hmm. I don't, you'd have to get it through the school to do it. But it would be perfect right there. You got the sidewalk would come right up into the village. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it would, it's just a place that's pretty open. So and there wouldn't be a lot of, you know, riprap traffic and stuff right there It'd just be you know just open so mm -hmm. just i'd want to make sure we keep it away from that hydrant good oh yeah we yeah. have to as far as that hydrant is that was my one we use <coughs> that was my other spot i thought of but yeah it's we had to do pretty good and be a lot less work yeah the three phases right there but i don't know We'd have to get permission from the school in order to do it, I think. Yeah, they'd probably insist that we um, <laughs> buy the other building. building. <laughs> but when, when we were looking at the daycare building, there was a lot of discussion about the traffic that was going to be down there. Right. But you only got four spots. You know, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's why I thought that. this over here would be good. But they, they really like the firehouse thing, and, but... I don't know. That's a little. We'd have to tear the building down, I think, in order to do it there. So that would be my thought. Anyway. The one thing about the firehouse, if we did ease it into there, that would also possibly give us a public restroom, which is kind of lacking in town here, especially since COVID. A lot of people have closed off access to their, their bathrooms in town, and we ended up buying a porta potty to <laughs> stick on the back side of it. The right. park there. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it got got used fairly regular, I think. <laughs> oh well. Well, anyway, we should we should make some traction on this before too much time goes by because we might as well take them up on their excitement about doing something. Yeah, I'll yeah. I'll get in touch with Caleb and we'll go over it and see what yeah. he has to say. I All mean, right. in reality, when we wherever we decide to put it won't probably be that long until we're thinking about where to put another one. <laughs> you know. Well, that parking ride down there doesn't get used very much anyway, so yeah. I yeah. mean, it that makes it, good. it's already pretty well set. We take down some of those trees and stick mm -hmm. that some sort of, you know, lean to yeah. in there, yeah. you know, just to house the mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, most of them are right out in the open. And I yeah. think eventually our, our when we did our sidewalk study, didn't they bring the sidewalks down to the park and ride? They did. Yeah, so eventually we would have sidewalks right down to mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one there now. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't, the get, shoulder. doesn't get flowered, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, thanks, Jeff, for sparking that conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I owe you one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and nothing under old business, even though we did touch on a lot of old business already. Any um, public um, commentary out from in the Zoom world or in the room? Well, I would just like anyone who's still working on their reports for the town report mm -hmm. to, to uh, spend some time and get them to me. Mm -hmm. We'll get you that letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can call it a report. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. Well, I Dear think John. that... Um, we don't have anybody reading and I think that answer. does it. Thank you all for coming out. And <coughs> happy January. I'd uh, move Thank to you. adjourn. A second. All in favor? All right. Good night, all. And, um, have a good evening, everybody. Yep. yep. Good night. Bye, Martha. And then, um, then I'm going to move to um, enter into executive session to talk about um, real estate issues.